All right, welcome back. We're going to do another rendition of Randall Reports here with Randall Carlson, looking at recent evidence and scientific papers pointing to impacts, air bursts, and uh, other crater actually found in China. So a couple of recent papers Randall's going to look at with us. Where do you want to start, Randall? Well, I'll just start by saying, you know, I'm sitting out on my deck under this beautiful sky here. Um, but something strange about it, it doesn't seem to be moving. Okay, uh, so I must be in a time warp. Uh, yeah, some some new interesting papers coming out for uh, that have come out in the last two, three, four months. And some of them, a uh, couple of these reports we've had in our monthly newsletter. But uh, we thought we could elaborate a little bit on some of it and maybe show a few images and things that uh, didn't make their way into the newsletter. Uh, probably just because of, uh, you know, copyright issues and things like that. But um, well, we so do want to go ahead and mention that, yeah, the, the newsletter, if you're not signed up already, that's a great place to get information, what Randall's up to, the tours, upcoming events, uh, a lot of things in the works for 2022. So if you haven't already, check out randallcarlson.com and randallcarlson.com slash newsletter. And you can sign up right there to get it in your email first Saturday of each month. And uh, occasionally there might be some uh, bonus newsletters that come through, special info, uh, breaking things that may be happening. But uh, definitely get it right there. And uh, eventually they'll be posted. They'll have their own home, uh, their own page on the website also. But initially there, some of the information is only coming through these newsletters. So be sure to sign up for that. Thanks, Brad. And yeah, the first thing I wanted to talk about was actually one of the featured reports in the November newsletter. And uh, I'll just I'll just get a little bit, uh, actually go to the newsletter itself first. Um, and the report talks about strewn field, and it's the sixth strewn field uh, that uh, is has been discovered or identified or recognized on Earth. And uh, a strewn field is the um, caused by the impact of a cosmic body traveling at hypervelocity speeds, and it hits the ground and essentially liquefies everything in the tremendous heat of the uh, impact. And the ejecta often is quite frequently goes out as molten material, and it can range all the way down to vapor to you know, more uh, mesoscale phenomena like, or macro scale phenomena, phenomena that could be like, uh, you know, uh, raindrop size or larger. And that stuff comes back down and that forms this ejecta pattern. And uh, as it's descending through the atmosphere, it can assume a variety of aerodynamic shapes and leading to microtectites. So there's a discovery in um, the Atacama Desert. And it's uh, a strewn field, about 250 square miles in extent. Um, first noticed in 2011 uh, who, by one of the authors of the, the most recent paper. Uh, the paper was published in Earth and Planetary Science Letters entitled The 650 Square Kilometer Miocene Strewn Field of Splash Form Impact Glasses in the Atacama Desert, Chile. And that was published in... Uh, 2020 this year 2021 and so um uh this was followed up by discovered in 2011 followed up by extensive field work that led the the collection of about 23,000 samples that were subsequently analyzed and dated by the 18 member scientific team that worked on this who showed that the samples were produced by melted bedrock ballistically ejected upward and outward from the point of impact and which recrystallized upon falling back to earth. Uh, the composition of the glassy forms was mostly similar to that of the regional bedrock, but also contained 5% iron. Uh, and this of course would suggest that the impactor was an iron meteorite. Um, so then they conducted vision track dating on the samples. And this is yielded an age uh, just less than uh, 800, 800, excuse me, 8 million years, 8 million years, which 
as in the title. That would be in the Miocene epoch. The samples were found both lying on the desert surface and mixed in with the gravels of the desert floor. So I imagine um, you were asking about that earlier, Brad, when we were talking about this and were they finding them? And, and yeah, so the answer is yes, it was mixed in with the gravels. Then I'm guessing that they were at some point within the past 8 million years, they would have been buried and then probably erosional processes brought them to the surface. What I would be wondering about is if you were to excavate down, could you find them below the surface or are they strictly confined to the surface? I, that I don't know. You know, are they, are they lying where they fell or have they been redeposited? Have they been transported from where they originally fell? I don't know. I don't think the paper says anything about that. Well, it is a desert, so very low levels of annual rainfall, yeah. right? So uh, it must be pretty windy also to keep things moving instead of accumulating there if it's not being washed <clears throat> in by rains. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, for it to be, I think you said 7.8 million years earlier more a little more accurately than eight i guess um yeah yeah that's a long time for for them to still be exposed that's that's interesting that there there's places like that but uh, also you know quick math one of our favorite numbers that keep showing up to mm -hmm. 2.6 <clears throat> right so 7.8 mm -hmm. is three times 2.6 ah okay Whatever that may mean uh, some cycle of larger uh, events well, that would uh, mean it was an integral multiple of the processional cycle, or very close to it. All right. Um, well, yeah. So you know what this kind of suggests to me and makes me wonder is okay if if at some point this strewn field was actually buried and then you know exhumed by later erosional processes, and the other five strewn fields we know about are primarily the result of of you know, finding things pretty much on the surface. Um, could there be other strewn fields that are buried that, you know, in various locations, but they're under many feet of sediment. And so they're mixed in. We don't know. I, I would certainly think that that's a probability. You know, the, the, uh, Georgia tectites are found. Um, I don't remember the name of the actual strata, uh, but it's about a, uh, oh, it's about a, just under a 36 million year old strata that's exposed on the, the, the fall, the transition between the Piedmont and the coastal plain that occurs just south of uh, Macon, Georgia. And during a heavy rainfall, that this steep bank will erode. And one of those layers is that 36 million year old layer that was the surface at the time of the impact, whose craters on the bottom of Chesapeake Bay. Right. And the splash of that, you know, fell down over all the Southeast. And so that place, that one particular place is, is, um, is where that strata outcrops and the, uh, tectite collection that they have over at the Fernbank science center for many years was pretty much all collected from right in there. They're called Georgiites and they're 36 million year old tectites. Look at a couple, um, a couple of images here. Um, I'll jump over and we'll, we'll look at that. The team came up with the term Atacamites, Atacamites, due to their similarity to tectites in terms of aerodynamic shaping, melting, um, temperatures, water content, and so on. The majority of the samples display globular forms as well as teardrop dumbbell and button shapes. Now I'm, you know, roughly quoting and para paraphrasing here from the newsletter we sent out, not the, directly from the article. Uh, the majority of the samples display globular forms as well as teardrop dumbbell. Oh, I said that. It is estimated now, this is interesting, that formation temperature had to be at least 1,700 degrees centigrade, which is 3,000 plus degrees Fahrenheit. Um, at this point, no crater has been found, but based upon the extent of the strewn field, it is estimated that the cra ca crater capable of ejecting material up to 25 miles from the point of impact must have been in the range of five miles in diameter. So here's, here's the Atacomites right here over on the left. So you can see some pretty interesting shapes there. And those are all formed aerodynamically. And I'm not sure of what dynamic processes determine 
why this molten stuff takes the, the, the different unique shapes that it does? I mean, they're all aerodynamic, but w what occurred that's different? I mean, because they take such a variety of forms and shapes. Um, it must have to do, I would think, with ap atmospheric turbulence. So this uh, E is a backscatter electron image of iron oxides in a highly magnetic atacomite. So, okay, I guess there's nothing else to look at there. This was the paper, by the way, a 650 square kilometer Miocene strewn field of splash form impact glasses. And their authors, you can see they're a distinguished team from uh, France, Italy, Brazil, Chile, Chile, France, Belgium, a lot of French geologists and scientists in there. And so I there's have now six strewn fields, you said. This makes number six. Yeah, yep. That's the sixth one. Okay. Well, I'm just remembering seeing them. This may have to be another episode, uh, Randall report. They, they had one across a large portion of, uh, Southeast Asia, I guess. And they finally identified where they think that crater is. Yeah. So that yeah. was just the beginning of 2021. I think that may maybe late 2020, but, uh, yeah, that's something else we can revisit. Yeah. I think that would be a good idea. I do. Um, so, um, then in the December newsletter, whoops, we got a, a dog that wants to come through here. She always waits, you know, go hours and hours. And then when I sit down to, to record, then she's got to come through. So, um, Atacama desert, interestingly, cause we had two reports coming out of the Atacama desert, right? So, um, this is now from the December, 2021 cosmography and newsletter, um, which is pretty much always reporting on matters of interest to cosmographians. Okay. So in November, I reported on the discovery of impact glass in the Atacama Desert in Chile. The discovery occurred in 2011 and then was subsequently followed up by extensive field work and laboratory testing. So we learned then that those um, splash forms, those, those tech type like forms were um, part of the ejecta pattern, the splash that fell back to earth and was aerodynamically shaped. Um, but now we have another, uh, discovery, a cosmic discovery in the Atacama desert here. Um, so this was, um, the finding of large scale m amounts of desert glass, right? We'll look at that to see the difference between that and the tech tectites that we were just looking at. 